Preparing fermented dill pickles, Hungarian kovácsos uborka with Marika. Now Marika is the lady that appears in our video about <laughs> authentic Hungarian goulash and uh, she was a professional chef in Hungary. She was out visiting and we learned a lot from her. This video is several years old. Uh, I have a lot of videos, I've said this before, that I make that I don't always upload everything right away. But it, there's a time for everything. So this was my dad's garden some years ago. And you can see all the dill. Now this is late in the summer. The dill has already turned brown. But it doesn't matter. You, what you try to do is find some of the greener ones. And when you're making the kovasos uborka, the fermented pickles, from green dill, it doesn't take on a color. But if you're using the older dill like these, then a little bit of the orange will bleach out into the juice and color the water just slightly, ever slightly orange. But it's not, a, it's not an issue. It doesn't matter whatsoever. But this was my dad's garden years ago, so kind of brings back memories. Finom, that's Hungarian for delicious, good, tasty, f uh, more like delicious than tasty or whatever. It's Finom. Meanwhile, while we're getting the dill, uh, my godmother, Julia, is preparing the cu uh, cucumbers, the pickles. They're about pickling size, not very large, and what you do is you cut the tips off on both ends, cut the ends off, and then you cut them in one way and another way. You see that she cuts in one side, flips the cucumber over, and then cuts in from the other side. Now, she hasn't cut the tips off them yet, but the tips will be cut off, believe me. Now this is something that we learned how to make when they were out and Cindy has made it before last year and year before just in our little apartment on the balcony very simple very easy to do and uh, I got to tell you that uh, you know being 60 plus years old I you know I grew up in Hungary and my grandfather lived far away from us on the shores of the Danube river I believe the town was called Dunakesa I believe that's the name the way it was pronounced and that's where he lived and he, with his uh, wife and uh, second married, second wife. And uh, she used to make these kovasos uborka all summer long. And it was absolutely amazing. I still have memories, you know, when I was a kid, uh, I don't know, five, six years old. I mean, we're talking about 1959, 60, 61, whatever, 62, being visiting over there and uh, just getting into it. I love them. You don't have to have it with potatoes or meat or whatever. If you love dill pickles, it, it's just an awesome experience. So now Marika has brought in the uh, dill. We got big jars. The big jars were, well, we used to buy the dill pickles at Costco and you know, you get the big jar of them. So we always save the jars. We don't toss things like that out. So what she takes is some of the dill and makes a little nest in the bottom of a jar. Yes, Quite a bit of dill actually as you can see. Th that's why the garden's full of it. It still need a little bit more. It, it's going to have a lot of dill. It gives off a flavor for it. In the meantime, Julia is still cutting up all the pickles because it's going to take a lot to fill up the jars. Now the beauty of doing this kind of stuff, the fermented pickles, is it's ready in probably about two to three days max in the summertime. Yeah, so you can see that she's cut the ends off because the ends, if you cut the ends off, it doesn't get bitter, the cucumber. And the reason it's cut in both ways is that the juice can get into the pickle from all sides. And you want the smaller cucumbers like these. Some people swear by bigger cucumbers. But Marika doesn't like the big cucumbers because she says it has a lot more seeds in it. And, and then the inside gets soft when they're uh, fermenting. The small ones stay crisp, crunchy, crisp cucumber. If somebody's out there Hungarian, they, they can 
here that I am translating almost as much as word for word as I can what she's saying. She says, it's interesting, not all cucumbers get uh, bitter. And uh, when she's got the bottles half or the jars half filled up, then she takes another batch of uh, dill and puts it in there. And uh, it's not as much as on the bottom, but a little bit in the middle. You gotta have the flavor go all the way around, and the smells and the taste. It's very simple, very easy. I mean, I don't know what the cost of cucumbers are in your area in the summertime, pickling cukes, but you can buy it fairly cheap. Recently, uh, last week, Cindy and I were at Costco, and we used to buy the big bottles of uh, pickled pickles, and uh, it used to be what, like three ninety nine. Well, it's more than doubled in price now. Everything keeps going up. So, like we have the garden happening. We're going to have pickles. We're going to have a lot of dill. We're going to be doing this all summer long. And if you have a meat dish, you got potatoes. You got you know roast or uh, steak or whatever. It's such an awesome thing to have with it. Or just by itself. Cindy loves it. You know, at the night time, you know, you're watching TV and you have one or two for snack, just crunchy. You turn it over and then you cut from the opposite side into it. If a cucumber is very small, you don't cut into it or just cut one side, half. Yeah. Cindy says she's a good teacher. So then you have the bar, the jar all filled up, and you put dill on top of the top of it again. So as you saw that, you know, we're planting the garden right now, and we've got dill coming up all over because that's how my dad had it. And the dill throws its seeds off in the fall, and the next year it just keeps coming back. It, it, it's almost like a weed. You can't get rid of it. And I wouldn't want to get rid of it. But like I said, you know, I remember back uh, 1959, 60, 60, early 60s, being at my grandfather's. And uh, my memories are from the Kovaso Shuborka. Then at the back of their yard, they had a bunch of raspberry push bushes. And I, a little kid would love to go out there, stand among the raspberry bushes and pick the raspberries and put them in my mouth one at a time and eat those and then the other thing that my dad had as a hobby, my grandfather I should say had as a hobby is he had uh, show pigeons N not passenger pigeons but these show pigeons that you know had a big fan tail and colorful and all different things and and he had a whole s pigeon coop full of them and uh, I loved watching the pigeons and and being around them Memories from childhood in the 19, late 50s, early 60s, hungry. But that's the thing is that, you know, when you, you do stuff like this, it brings back memories. And for me right now, one of the memories I see is that my dad sitting in the background there. And how I wish he was here now. Marika was a smoker and she wanted to go have a smoke break. Now, after the smoke break, we're inside. And she's getting water for the kovaso shuborka, the fermented pickles. She's getting lukewarm water, warm water, so that the fermentation process starts right away. If you use cold water, it takes a lot longer for the water to warm, warm up. And one of the things with kovaso shuborka is you put bread on it. And the bread has yeast, and it's the yeast that starts the fermentation. So it happens very quick if you're losing, using warm water. She figures it'll need about 10 liters of water. She's going to mix uh, salt into the warm water. And the warm water, the salt and the yeast will act uh, very quickly to uh, ferment the cucumbers and you got the dill and stuff and uh, garlic, there's garlic put into it. It's absolutely amazing food. And very simple, I mean it's so simple. Maybe I'm not explaining it very right, but all you need is a lot of dill, a lot of pickling cubes, warm water, some cucumbers, slices of bread, some salt and bang, you're off and running. She doesn't measure the salt. This isn't cooking like, you know, you see a cooking show and you need 
you know, a quarter cup or five teaspoons and a quarter or whatever. She's putting a lot of salt into it because it's going into a lot of jars. It's a lot of water and salt. You know, when you have pickled cucumbers, it has to be salty to an extent, but it doesn't even taste salty. It's more of a soury taste. So then she mixes the salt up. She put three of those uh, spoonfuls in and a, and a little bit more, three and a, qu a quarter bit. Yeah. Then you put the bread on top of it. So you see that you had dill on the bottom, cucumbers, dill, cucumbers. Then you put dill on top with the bread. And that makes it sour. Shavanyushag is sour. And you put lots of bread on it. Now, one of the new things in Hungary that they started doing is using potatoes. Uh, raw potatoes that are peeled. And you put it on the bottom and uh, the same way basically as this but instead of using bread you use potatoes and she says she's tried it and it was really good but she still prefers the old way so this you know i i always say this it's authentic hungarian but there's many different varieties depends what a person likes now you fill it up with water that's salty water by the way remember lukewarm salty water Now, Cindy's going to give it a try. Oh, dear. Oops, yeah, I'm kind of the wrong person to be doing this today. That's not the moonshine, you know, that's just as white. No, I've just been dropping everything today for some reason. I probably shouldn't be doing this. Probably in about another month and a half, maybe not even that, we'll be making this. And I'm going to film it again how we make it, because it's basically the same thing. But that's the thing, is that we learn. In the old days, you know, people used to learn from their grandparents and their aunts and uncles, and, and we still do that to an extent. And then we have the option now of learning also from uh, YouTube and uh, Internet and stuff like that. So there's garlic on top of it, and then basically the only thing that you do is you put a plate on it upside down, and like here you can see in the foreground one, and leave it sit out in the sun for two to three days. It's done. That's it. 